Welcome to the Big Four Accounting Firms podcast brought to you by BigFourAccountingFirms.com. If you enjoy our show, don't forget to help us out by subscribing to this podcast, sharing it with a friend, and providing us with a review on iTunes. Check out the show notes below for the link. Thanks, and enjoy the show. In today's podcast, we will be discussing the 90th Oscars and what to expect. As you might remember, PwC screwed up last year's Oscars by handing the wrong envelope to Warren Beatty and Faye Dunaway. And PwC is in charge of counting the ballots at the Academy Awards every year. With last year's fiasco, this year there will be increased scrutiny on them, and hopefully they don't mess up. But with that being said, I wanted to go ahead and discuss five things that you can expect to see in this year's Oscars as it relates to PwC. First off, there are going to be new presenters. Last year's presenters were Martha Ruiz and Brian Culloden, two partners at PwC. But since they were overseeing the fiasco that happened last year, they will no longer be there. This year's presenters will be Rick Rosas and Kimberly Borden. Rick Rosas is a veteran of the Academy Awards. He used to be the presenter for PwC for the Oscars for 14 years, as far as ballot counting goes. Another thing that you can expect from the PwC presenters this year is that they will not be tweeting during the Oscars. In order for PwC to maintain the account, they had to agree to not allow their partners to have cell phones during the Academy Awards. Since PwC was lucky enough to keep the account, I'm sure they were more than willing to throw their cell phones in the trash in order to keep the prestige that comes with presenting at the Oscars. The second thing that you can expect to see at the Oscars is additional controls around the process. PwC has mentioned that there are additional controls being implemented and that Tim Ryan himself might have been involved in implementing these and brainstorming them as if that would make a difference. And these controls include partners memorizing the actual winners in case the envelopes are wrong. And there will also be partners behind stage making sure that the right envelope is being handed to the right presenter. As we previously said before, none of the partners will be able to have cell phones, and that's an additional control as well. There are a number of controls that PDBC mentioned that they would implement as they've learned their lesson. I mean, there's only so many controls that you can actually have around counting ballots and handing the right envelope to the right person. I don't think the issue was design of controls, if we get into audit terms here. I think the issue was an operation of the controls because PDBC was concerned with representing their brand versus making sure that the right envelope went to the right person and the ultimate winner was the right person. I think the control that needs to be put in place this year is a management over PWC's ego. It was the ego that got in the way of them getting it right last year. One thing to keep an eye out for as you're watching this year's Academy Awards is to see how these controls pan out and see whether PwC has any mishaps or errors. If PwC screws up again, then I think all heck will break loose. And I'm sure before the broadcast and during the broadcast, and probably even after the broadcast, there will be many people speaking about these new controls and interviewing the PwC partners to understand the new controls. Speaking of PwC partners, that brings us to the number three thing that you can expect to see at this year's Oscars. Another thing that you can expect to see from PwC at this year's Oscars is that Tim Ryan will be attending. Tim Ryan is the U.S. chairman of PwC. And as the U.S. chairman and being the chairman of all U.S. PwC accounts, he is responsible for this engagement as it is in the United States and it's a large account. He understands that the risk is so high that he has to be at the 2018 Oscars to manage the process and to manage PwC's reputation. And I'm also sure that the Academy Awards has personally requested that he be present for this broadcast and take responsibility for everything. And I'm very confident that the cameras will catch a glimpse of him or he'll be shown during the broadcast. Either that or they'll interview him during the pre-show or post-show. The fourth thing that you can expect from PwC this year at the Oscars is that there won't be much social media activity from them. Last year, PwC was so active on social media regarding the Academy Awards, it was extremely ridiculous. I mean, it was obviously ridiculous because what happened was that Brian Cullinan, the partner for 
the partner in charge of presenting the envelopes, was caught backstage on his phone tweeting. But I personally don't think that was fully his fault. Leading up to the Oscars, PDBC was running multiple campaigns on social media about the Oscars. And we covered that last year on a podcast about how focused PWC was on branding themselves before the Oscars that they forgot how to do their job. On that podcast last year, we mentioned how distracted PWC was and how they might get the Oscars wrong. PWC even ran this social media campaign last year, which I thought was a joke, and it involved the ballot briefcase, which is supposedly this briefcase that PWC took around and kept all the ballots in. I think they even came up with a name for it. It was Briefy, and they had this ballot briefcase campaign on on Instagram where you had to guess where the ballot briefcase would be and where it end up with next and it was going all over the world and they ran this campaign under the hashtag ballot briefcase in case you want to check it out on Instagram the posts from last year are still up there I think this concept was kind of ridiculous because there are our important balance in that briefcase that needed to be counted and safeguarded and meanwhile they're sending it around the world and PDBC kind of took this job as a joke and an opportunity to brand themselves versus worried about a client's needs. And I don't care if PDBC has a fake briefcase with nothing in it and they're pretending there are ballots in it. If I'm a client like the Academy Awards, I don't want to see PDBC showing their work materials all around the world. I don't want to see that nonsense. I would want PwC showing the ballot briefcase every day in a secure vault somewhere locked up with the hashtag something like nobody has access to this. I don't want to see it with some brand new associate in Mexico who's holding the briefcase and drinking Starbucks with the briefcase. I want to make sure that it's secure. PwC was even running these campaigns on Snapchat and all their other social media accounts. They're just trying to be trendy to get new recruits. Another thing that PwC did last year was they had a a social media campaign that promoted their pre-show before the Oscars. And that's another thing that they won't be doing this year. They won't be having a pre-show. They won't be promoting a pre-show because PwC isn't the main attraction this year like they were trying to be last year. It's all about them doing their job. It's not about them branding themselves anymore. And that's one thing you haven't seen this year. You haven't seen any fun and games in the run-up to the 2018 Oscars. PwC is completely silent with regards to the Oscars on all their social media accounts, and I expect that to continue. The final thing that you can expect regarding PwC at the 2018 Oscars is that there will be tons of jokes about them and their mix-up from last year. Even though PwC is trying to lay low on social media, that doesn't mean that all of the celebrities and the presenters at the Oscars have forgiven them or forgotten them. I'm sure Jimmy Kimmel, who is hosting this year's Oscars, will make fun of them as often as possible. Especially this year with the Me Too movement and other diversity movements, there are so many jokes that people are going to be afraid to make. But the one safe joke this year that everybody will feel safe making will be about the accountants, PwC, and how they got last year's Oscars wrong. It's one thing you can expect for everybody to make fun of PwC at this year's Oscars. Even though PwC is avidly trying to manage their brand and trying to lay low. They aren't going to be able to avoid all the jokes that are about to come their way. With that being said, I hope everybody enjoys the Oscars. I hope everybody can laugh at all the jokes about PwC. And I'm actually pretty confident that PwC will get this year's Oscars right and that they will increase their professionalism when they are handing the ballots and envelopes out. And they're going to have to do this for a couple of years of flying under the radar and just being extremely professional. And to be honest, I'm not sure anybody can ever forget what they did because the mistake they made was the biggest Oscars mistake ever. So the best they can hope for is to lay low. There is no such thing as an amazing ballot counter, and there are no rewards that will be handed out for the most improved ballot counter either. wanted to take a quick break today to tell you about our Big Four interview course. Did you know that only 4% of candidates get into the Big Four? That's right, only 4%. Deloitte gets about 500,000 applications a year and only 4% of those candidates get in. Well, we wanna help you get a job at the Big Four. We wanna help you be part of that 4% by preparing you for your Big Four interview and we think we can do this with our Big Four interview course. Our Big Four interview course provides you with all the important things that you need to do to prep for your Big Four interview. This includes research on all the Big Four that's prepared for you and also 
guidance on how to conduct more specific research on the firm and practice you'll be interviewing with. We also walk you through interview questions and how to answer those interview questions the way the big four professionals will want them to be answered, among other valuable insights into the big four. And if that isn't enough, we offer a PDF of 100 additional big four interview questions and a big four resume template. You've invested in your accounting education and you invest in your accounting exam, whether that's a CPA exam or another course. So why not invest in a Big Four interview course to help you nail the Big Four interview? Check out the link to the Big Four interview course in the show notes to learn more. Thanks, and now we'll get you back to the show. We appreciate your help in growing this podcast so we can continue to bring you the best Big Four content possible. You could help us out by providing a review on iTunes, sending us an email with your comments, and don't forget to share with your friends. There's a link below in the show notes. That's our show for today. Thanks for listening and have a great day.